Hello folks and welcome to this week's car news. After last week's fairly lacklustre week of news, I've got a bumper edition for you this week, so keep watching. No surprise that we're starting off with this one, is it? How much is fuel duty and what will the cut on petrol save you? So petrol and diesel have had fuel duty cut by 5p, but let's have a look what a litre of fuel actually looks like. So 33% of it is the actual cost of it, 8% is retailer's profit, 7% is the cost of the biofuel content, and then the rest of it is tax. 17% VAT, 35% fuel duty. Oh, sorry, supply and delivery costs there at 1% as well. We know that 5p cut will make next to no difference to anyone. If you fill up your tank, I think it's going to save you three quid or something like that. As you can see, the fuel duty and VAT that the government gets through fuel sales is absolutely huge. And really, 5p, when they're making that much more VAT and that much more fuel duty, pa. Right, electric car charge points to overtake fuel pumps. So this is a plan to have 300,000 electric car charging points by 2030 under government plans, but motoring groups say the rollout's not fast enough. Obviously it's not fast enough. The amount of EVs going on the road every year is going absolutely through the roof and certainly will when production times speed up again. More on that later. Governments over the years often make these bold statements like this is going to be in place by this year. I think safe in the knowledge that they won't be around to see it out or if if not that party, but that group of individuals. So currently it's 30,000 electric charging points and the plan is to have 300,000 by 2030. This has been reported all over the place, this story albeit with different levels of accuracy and different levels of sort of fanfare around it and BS around it, really. The International Energy Agency has outlined 10 measures that it believes could cut oil demand by 2.7 million barrels a day within four months. And some of these are absolutely brilliant. Cut speed limits by at least six miles an hour. So that would take our motorway speed limit down to 64. Work from home up to three days a week where possible. Difficult if you're a delivery driver or something. Car-free Sundays in cities. Now, I used to go to Madrid quite often for work and they did a thing there, I think it was once a month, you have a car-free day in the city and that's because their smog levels were so high. I could actually see that coming in, believe it or not. Possibly not everywhere, but maybe somewhere like London or Birmingham or I guess EVs would be allowed, I don't really know. Cut the cost of public transport and encourage alternatives such as walking, cycling and micro-mobility. That's fine, and it's fine to cut the cost of public transport, but actually make it accessible and reliable as well. For me to get on a train, I live in a big town on the edge of another big town, which is attached to another big town, which is trying to become a city, and I'm 25 minutes away in the car from a train station. doesn't matter really if it costs me 20 quid to get to London. If I have to drive to get to the train, meh. Alternate private car access to roads in large cities. For example, giving access to those with even plate numbers on some days, and odd numbers on others. Whoever's come up with some of these things needs to be put into one of those Amazon rockets and sent up to the moon with William Shatner and Jeff Bezos and probably left there. Increase car sharing, check tyre pressures and turn down air conditioning. Promote efficient driving for freight lorries and delivery vehicles. Use high speed and night trains instead of planes where possible. Avoid business air travel where alternative options exist. I think a lot of people are doing this now anyway. I mean, how, pe how many people are flying abroad for meetings now after two years of doing them on video calls? Not that many. Reinforce the switch to electric and more efficient vehicles. I think we're doing that already, aren't we? This one's from Routers. Lacking wire harness from Ukraine, Volkswagen delays ID5 launch. It's just a general thing. I've touched on it in other weeks. But uh, car delays are, are only increasing because of what's going on in Ukraine. Seems a bit like a first world problem to be talking about this when all that's going on over there. And uh, obviously we don't take that lightly whatsoever, but I'm just reporting a news story. So lots of car manufacturers, uh, particularly the European manufacturers, are reporting delays because of what's going on in Ukraine. It seems like Ukraine actually supplied quite a lot of wiring harnesses in the industry and a few other key parts, which is delaying production of quite a lot of new vehicles, as well as the semiconductor thing, of course, which continues to roll on as a problem. UK car production falls 41.3% as EVs make up a quarter of cars made. Um, it's actually the worst month. February was the worst month of car production since 2009 in the UK, and it declined for both dis domestic and overseas markets, down 35.8% and 41.8% respectively. Exports accounted for more than 8 in 10 cars made, with the majority of shipments heading into European Union, equivalent to 31,000 units. 
The US, in comparison, took 11% of exports and China 8.7%. The news comes after fresh SMMT analysis published this week revealed that some 10.8 billion has been committed to UK electric vehicle production and gigafactories since 2011. So it's fine all this investment being there, but all these gigafactories have to be built so that they can build the EV batteries and so that they can build semiconductors and all these things. Uh, so until that starts to happen, with everything else that's going on in the world, these delays are only going to continue. I thought this was quite funny. New 2023 Porsche 911 spotted with minimal camouflage. That's because 9 out of 10 people wouldn't know that's the new Porsche 911 because it looks like the old one. So this one's from the Mirror and it's about a new mobile phone law that's coming into force. And it's basically the one that's always been around, but it's now zero tolerance and the fines are much higher. So it's about using your phone when you're driving. You can't do that anymore. If you've got a handheld device when you're driving and you get caught, you could get a fine of up to a grand and six points on your license. Uh, obviously, this has been around for quite a while. You haven't been able to use a handheld device, but they could use a bit of discretion and the, the penalties weren't harsh as they are now. I don't have too much of a problem with this personally. I think a Bluetooth device is as cheap as chips and most new cars have Bluetooth, mobile phone, hands, hands-free hands technology. And still, some people just choose not to use it. I think if you don't have that and you can't afford that, pull over and take your phone call. So I always like to give you my little bit of weekly progress. Didn't get that many views on last week's news video. It was a really nice day though, wasn't it? But 63% of you that watched it weren't subscribed. If you're one of those now, subscribe. For the love of God, subscribe. 1.2% uh, female audience last week. So as you can see, I'm just becoming a bigger and bigger hit with the ladies. This one's from Top Gear. Recycled nappies have just helped pave a road in Wales. And please save your jokes about crap roads. 100,000 nappies recycled and melted into the road mix for a bit of Welsh blacktop. It's the A487 in Llanarth, in front of the Llanina Arms. Polymer-infused roads are already more widespread than you think. In Canada, they're ensuring highways don't crack over winter. Plasticised bitumen has a higher melting point than the regular stuff, so it's seeing wide use across the Middle East. It's also quieter than normal tar, so it's been used for just that purpose in the US. Honda has announced plans for two all-new crossovers for 2023. So one's a B-segment SUV, which is the picture here. It certainly has got a little touch of HRV about it, hasn't it? And this one's been called the ENY1 prototype. And then the second one's going to be a C-segment, which I guess is going to replace the CRV, which, you know, you could see that possibly being the next CRV design. So maybe just a new name and a new ground-up design. And Honda are also releasing a new Civic, which is going to be hybrid 2-litre petrol, with two electric motors. I quite like that. I think that's quite a pretty little car, that. Uh, always sort of unsung heroes, the Honda Civic. It's a blooming good car, the Honda Civic, and has been for quite a long time. But they always seem to fly under the radar a bit and people go to the Focus or the Astra or something. Nothing wrong with the Civic. Right, and this is one of those story, non-story things from Sky. Toll roads could be introduced to the UK as electric car ownership surges. I feel like Sky are very good at doing sort of non-stories and trying to bring a story out of it. Obviously, when EVs have completely taken over, we are all going to be paying for our road tax in different ways. If they can't tax it on the fuel, which they probably will, we'll get taxed either as we drive on a per mile basis or all the roads, all the major roads will become toll, toll roads, you'll pay to go into cities, all that sort of stuff. What we should never worry about is that whichever government happens to be in power at the time, it's going to run out of ways to tax us. I think saying that they might come up with a new one or make an existing one a bit more widespread, I don't feel like it's a particular story. So thanks for that Sky News. And the big news for me this week is I'm now 100% self-employed. So I do this nonsense a few days a week and I also do this a couple of days a week, which is my coaching and consultancy business. If you are a small business owner, you can book a free consultation call with me. Don't worry, I am more intelligent than I look and more intelligent than I seem. But you can click through the site, find out a bit more about me and what it is that I do and all the things I can offer and um, book in half an hour, free consultations, totally free. You don't have to book anything with me afterwards. And we just get to talk about your business a little bit or your startup idea and see if there's any ways that I could possibly help you. And it's a no strings kind of thing, you know, because I give you half an hour of my time for free. It doesn't mean you have to 
sort of use me in future you don't it's just there if you need it you're going to be seeing much more youtube content from me in future both on this car channel and on my udefined channel and my time is going to be more precious than anything so all i would ask is only book a consultation call if you genuinely want to talk to me about your business please don't book a consultation call to um you know talk to me about the rising price of petrol or whether it's a good idea to buy an ev or not Lots of interesting stuff coming up on the channel this week. I don't know if you've seen my review of the Lexus 3, UX 300e, which is now live. I'm also doing some product reviews now. So um, when I can, I'm trying to get hold of some sort of car related equipment and give you a bit of a product review of that. So there'll be one or two of those in the next couple of weeks. So next week I've got a Kia Soul EV Max in full review. I know it's got really good range, but I don't know too much else about it. What, what I try and do when I'm gonna review a car is stay away from as much other content about it as I can so that I can give you my honest opinion on it without being kind of influenced by anything else. I guess end of next week will be my least deals of the month video. So stay tuned for that one. Please give this video a thumbs up. You know how much it means to me when you do. And please try and support the channel in any way you can. Thanks for all those people that bought me a coffee last week. I really appreciate that. And thanks to the people that bought some merch. Once again, much appreciated. Any other way you can support the channel is much appreciated. One really great way you can is to follow me on social media because I still don't have enough followers. So I'm just gonna pop this thing up on the screen now. You've got my social media handles there, uh, up there. Please go and follow me on those, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of them. Thanks very much. Have a good week, and I'll see you next Sunday, if not before.